Welcome to the second episode of the Pickleball Code House. My name is Clifford, your host, and... Yeah, BK, the co-host for the day, and we are joined by two incredible guests. Mike? Mike Forster. There you go. Introduce yourself. Go for it. Yeah. What brings you here? So, uh, you know, I'm just here on the show to uh, talk about pickleball. I've been playing for probably about five years now. Um, come from a background of baseball, swimming, um, dive team, golf, and table tennis. Um, so, like I said, I've been playing for about five years. Play every day. Spend a lot of work doing it. Yeah, All arguably right. Orlando's best player. Um, we also have our Sick good friend David. Well, said arguably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, David. Now, now, now you get to say what you want to say. <laughs> no, second. I think Eddie, Eddie Perez. He left. He left. He's, left. he's Char- right Charlotte, North Carolina now. So yeah. he's okay, pretty good it's now. undisputed yeah. now. It's undisputed. Right. Okay. Be- before we get started, I just want to say thanks to Virus for sponsoring this episode. You guys are awesome. All right, let's go. All right, uh, David, if you want to give us an introduction, you can. But otherwise, we are going to get this thing started, and the court is officially in session. Boom. Biggest news um, <laughs> biggest news coming out in the pickleball world right now. Uh, Steve Kuhn officially resigned from the MLP. Who? Steve Kuhn. Who? The big time Steve Kuhn <laughs> revolutionary pickleball mind. Officially resigning from MLP. Thoughts, Mike? Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I felt like he was very good for the sport. Yeah. He probably resigned just because uh, things didn't go his way. I hate to say it. But he sh- they should have been, MLP should have been the leading pickleball uh, way of playing for instead of tournaments. Everybody yeah. has more fun. David, do you have more fun at MLP? I do not. <laughs> I do not have more fun. I don't think, I mean, yeah. I think it's great that he resigned. Um, I think what? that, um, you know, MLP, I don't think it's going to work long term. I mean, to be honest, I don't even watch it because I don't want to see Ben Johns play with somebody I don't even know. I mean, you know, it's not like mm-hmm. if I watch PPA or tournament style uh, pickleball, I see uh, Ben Johns. Colin Johns play against Dylan and JW, and that's a great match. But if I watch MLP, I see, you know, rally scoring. I see Ben seeing one or two balls in a game. It's like... Isn't it boring, though, seeing Ben and Colin play <coughs> Dylan and JW every time, or, or, or Riley and Matt, or whoever is it, it was? Is it boring seeing Tiger Woods play golf? Every, no, no, it's not. not the same thing. It's great. not the same it's great. thing. It's, it's like it's like watching pickleball. Is like you can see the future. You know exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah. This is why yeah. we don't bet no, in pickleball. You're sitting there cheering again. for an upset, when, but it when never happens. Like once in like fifty tournaments, yeah. they end up losing. I know, but I don't want to. You know, like Ben Johns is the best. He he's he's the goat, right? Yes. And him not getting to the finals or in a league not getting to because the finals. Because it's more fair now. Because it's, it's more, more fair. It's, yeah. Because they have the partners that everybody else has. Yeah. That's more fair in my opinion. Just added parity into the sport. Does parity not, not work for you? <laughs> um, the reason he no. wins is because Colin was was, was trained. But you just think Colin, to be... but you think Colin's Colin's not that is not that good except Pe- with with Ben on that right. Except for side. with Ben. That's it. Yeah. People aren't gonna beat Ben and Colin by going to Colin. They're gonna beat Ben and Colin by going to Ben. Yeah, yeah. But Colin it, doesn't miss. Yeah, because exactly. the guy is very consistent. This is the he doesn't make like almost unforced error. It's pretty consistent. His yeah, are I, just, great. <coughs> I just think it's a crapshoot when you play when you play MLP. You play rally scoring. There's no there's no freeze out for the for the second team coming up. So you know now it's just. How do you, you know, they want to bring gambling in. How do you gamble on something like that? Oh, it's the same yeah, with it's, it's perfect not for gambling yeah. because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm. You mean, don't is know. That, is that not the point is to have some parody where like you, you go watch a sport where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. No, you <laughs> Versus no, you watch Ben and no, Colin, you, you know what the outcome is no, going to be. No, you're not going to throw money at something that where you've got no idea what's going to happen. You kind of want to know, listen, I'm spending a lot of time. I mean, of course, there are favorites. Like there are favorites. You still think Ben's going to do well, but then you go out there and you're surprised when he doesn't win. And yeah. you you can bet a thousand dollars on Ben and Colin and win what ten dollars because the, <laughs> well maybe. if you bet a million dollars you know it, you can make some money <laughs> like so but you're taking the risk return. I mean you know yeah but realistically um, just to give a bit of background on Steve Kuhn and MLP and PPA um, we had the whole MLP was the team format PPA was the individual tournaments 
And then there were talks of them coming together, which was great. And then it ended up being um, some bad blood between the two organizations. So they ended up splitting, signed a bunch of players um, both ways. And then they came back to the table, um, agreed on a merger, which is yet to be signed as of this day. So oh, the not, merger is, is, that, not it, is not officially signed. Officially? No, it is not oh. officially signed. The merger is still technically just in talks, I believe. And it is not officially signed. So... Um, while they were coming back to the table, the rumor is Steve Kuhn wanted to expand Major League Pickleball. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to go from the 12, 12 Premier and 12 Challenger teams that we have now to bring in more teams so that you, had, right. you now have more owners, which will mean more capital to fund the sport. Yeah. However, I think like, I think this is the well, way to well, go. Per, well, perfect, because now you can watch Ben Johns play with the number 100 <laughs> male. So again, He's like, only number one so, because... He's got the best partners. So here's so, the thing. You don't know how pro how the pro secret work, David. The David, I'm gonna tell you something very. Tell you something, David. Yeah. So All right, I'm listening. <laughs> Those people, like, let's say Mag and I, we have tried like some some pro tournament, right? So yes. I, I I remember I mentioned that in the last episode. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you if you don't know, Mike was my partner. So we play yeah. against Jay. You lost zero and one against oh, whatever, Jay. Whatever, well, whatever, David. Say that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we play against Jay, Jay and, Tyson. and Tyson. So mm. what was the difference? They just crushed us. Mm -hmm. But for our defense, it wasn't like every point they just served and we lost it. So we just realized they way better like at consistency. They do that actually for a living. Mm -hmm. So if we were like, I don't know, a bit, I was nervous. But they don't. They just like, okay, this right. is another job. I'm just going to come and do it. Mm. So this is the Over different. Time. But for you right now, the way Pickleball is, is like a s circle, right? Everybody got their partner and their partner is the best one. But for you to get into the scene, it's going to be very hard for you. Because why? You're never going to find like a good and partner. And it's going to be even harder because of MLP. Because no. now they're putting all the money to a select group of players. No, so no, hold on. No. That means more people are getting more paid. More people are for getting one. paid. Well, the well, MLP people so you are getting got, paid. So you, you, you're getting more talent now. No, they're signing Did, people that, is, that have been playing the sport. What I'm saying fine. is if you want to, if you want to really uh, grow pickleball, you who's who's the APP uh -huh. guy? Ken Herman? Ken Herman. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ken Herman. You you give him the forty one million dollar. <laughs> And, and and you pay when you make the main draw you get paid when you get out of qualifying and you get into the main draw you need to get paid okay but let's talk now agreed. it's all agreed. top heavy like so so let's say um you know you know mike gets a million a million a year for the next three years because mlp signed him right mm -hmm. i mean he's gonna fake injuries he's not gonna play and, you know, maybe like the last six months of year three is going to really, if MLP is not bankrupt by then, mm. <laughs> is going <coughs> to really play and try to get the next, the next contract. It's just, I don't, I, I just think like putting all the money for, for like a hundred players, how many, how many were signed? Uh, uh, almost 150, I believe. So, but yeah. who gets paid now? In pro turn, like in the PPA tournaments. Well, well, mm. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that people are getting paid. Right. What I'm seeing is, what I'm saying is, if you want new people to to join the sport because it's it's cost prohibitive as it mm -hmm. is now, right? But nothing's changed. Now they're putting, you know, all these millions of dollars into to player salaries, but still the guy that's you know played tennis for Venezuela, you know, maybe futures tours or whatever, mm. he could be a good player, but he can't afford to. To drive all over the show. And this play, is this is me, hotel. David. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the secret. If you want yeah. to become a pro, you feel like you have the skills and everything. Mm. You have to play like a pro tournament, like play the PPA, APP, like every weekend. Every month. Every time. Mm. Okay, so this is the only reason I'm still like a 3.5 at best because I don't have the money, David, <laughs> yeah, who's like to go, that? But to go funny, every weekend exactly well, okay. to travel across the country, yeah. okay, like to so, play tournament. Okay, so and I have a family and I have a daughter. Okay, so. So thanks to Steve Kuhn, the visionary, that say goodbye to your dream. Go find a job. Because he's giving the money to 96 or 150 <clears throat> players. Is it 150? Is it that yeah, right? I think almost 150, yeah. So and you're not part of that party. What? It's gonna to be tough to get to it. Oh, you don't understand. So there's gotta be an maybe. avenue to get to the money. A better avenue to get them yeah, to the money yeah, you're saying. Yeah. The difference is um, yeah, by playing yourself to it, not by I mean, there's some of those, those okay. players that have been signed that yeah. 
that I feel yeah, like, yeah. you know, definitely they you and Cliff can beat. Maybe, it shouldn't have been you know, yeah, Beaker yeah. in the next five years, but, you know, there's some, <laughs> there's no, some no, questionable, the, you know, questionable signings. The there's realistic problem signings. was they ended up paying for names rather than paying for talent. So they did not award talent, they yeah. awarded names. So people sure. that have bigger brands, bigger names, or people that are good right now got paid for a long-term three-year contract. Yeah. Whereas if you have the talent to come up in the next year or so, there's no way f for you to make money because rather than put the money, as David said, into prize money and filling out the draw, like, so if you make the main draw, you still get knocked out in round one, you make a couple hundred bucks and you go to round two, you, you can, can make, make more least, around you three, make you make more. a thousand plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based Within, on what they're pay paying the player salaries, million, yeah, 100% yeah. that could have trickled down mm -hmm. to every mm -hmm. tournament prize money all the way down through the entire main draw or at least the top four or five rounds but, mm. so that now your talent is being rewarded. So players that oh. make the draw will make the money rather than just players making money before no, they even step on court. This is a big fundamental change, though. That's, that's a whole different thing. Than Guys, we'll... you don't get it because the lower player, they are the one that bring in the money. They're not going to give you the money again. People like me that... I don't have any experience. So when I play like five hundred, five hundred dollars, like to play believe a tournament, me, the, the 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 couple of hundred that you pay as an entry is not going to pay these salaries. <laughs> okay. I mean they. I mean you. Mm -hmm. You have guys that have that bought MLP teams for what two hundred fifty thousand in the beginning. So nobody's okay. making money. So none of these teams. Are making uh, money. We don't know about that. They're never going to make, so, so make money. We that, don't know about that if they're not making money. That uh, money. that's, that's what here? brings me to my original point when Steve Kuhn came up to the owners and said, or all the stakeholders and said, I want to expand the MLP and bring in like twenty four more teams or so, mm. so that now we have more Bungie owners for more more capital. Exactly. So what Bungie ended up Steve. happening is all the stakeholders finally let go and said, your vision's not going to work for us anymore, which is what ended up being the big Listen, factor to was, Steve Kuhn uh, leaving is because now the MLP stakeholders, a lot of them resigned. So there were a lot of resignations mm. within MLP before Steve Kuhn resigned oh, okay. because they weren't happy with Steve Kuhn's original vision. And Steve, again, wasn't going to go through with something he didn't believe in, which is why the original right. split happened in the first place. So now when, when they split up in the first place, everybody supported Steve. But now that he came back to the table with a different vision while they already agreed on a secondary merger, like all the stakeholders went, nah, until we signed this, like we're not we're not making any drastic changes. Again, like none of the owners right now are making money. So what's the incentive for any other new owner to come in and, and, and create a team and fund more capital into it? So yeah, because I mean, it's implied profit, though. Like they're, the teams are going to be worth money. <laughs> I, I say tax, assuming taxes. It continues. Taxes. Too. You, you're, say, you're, you're saying that now. But again, if you do expand the league to David's point, like now the, the talent pool is so big. Yeah. That I mean, the, the bottommost players I mean. <laughs> are not going to be as good as the top players at all. So, like, not that sure, good. you have the Premier Division right now and the Challenger right now, and it's a good system where the top 24 players or like the top players are in one league, mm -hmm. and you have your secondary players that could potentially make the jump to Premier in the second league so that they get to work on their game. But when you add these teams, are you making the Premier bigger or are you adding two I more leagues below? So I this, is, this is what I want to I get you. If we have like 23 million people playing, yeah. so you only have like, let's say, 24 teams. Uh -huh. So what are we all doing? You Wait. make it like an uh, impossible. Like yeah. you should, you're supposed to, this is my idea. So like every state is like in basketball, you're supposed to have yeah, like a I team. Know. That's it. Create like a league but. and... Uh -huh. There's teams that pay for their players, and they can trade. They can yeah. buy players. Yeah. So the teams with the money are winning <clears throat> the leagues, whether it be baseball, basketball, typically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's still caps and luxury tax and all of that yeah. that goes into it. But again, yes, to your point, yeah. like the Warriors have just paid the right. millions of dollars in luxury tax because like Chase Center makes so much for right. them um, with their sales and all of that. Their team brings in so much money, but they don't mind spending six hundred million. Okay, in luxury because tax. okay, right now if you have like a 24 team this is why you you're not making money because it's not big enough but so, this is how you do it yeah this is this is how you make it so if you have a league like in every state right this is what is going to happen you're going to have so much people playing and so much people going to be talking about it this is what's going to make the sport even more popular is this well, right now yeah, yeah right now it's just a club it's just like a private yeah. thing so you don't think pickleball being operated like the nba is a good idea. Yeah. Is what you're telling this, me. This right? is this what is you're what telling me right now. Well, yeah. well, well here's, well, here's <laughs> the thing. Here's the we thing. We don't want to be it's as big as the NBA. Be, yeah. Okay. Well, so the NBA spends 50% of revenue on player salaries. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So in Pickleball, they're spending, 
you know, 250%. Is it 250%? No, wait, 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 two and a half times. A lot. Yeah, two so, and a half like, the PBA and MLP both blew through their original budget when they went out with the signing friends. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Blew wild. through it. Like, they don't have the money right now. Yeah, two I and a half I don't know times. about that. Did, they did. They, did, did, they, they, they blew through it. Plus, yeah. Do you think they give you, they, they give that information, like, to the public? How do you know that? Uh, pe yeah, they, people talk. Uh, but people talk. That yeah. information is yeah, two and a half available. times. Yeah, Tim Parks. I think Tim Parks said two and a half times. They're spending two and a half times on salary, uh, yeah. the revenue that they bring in. But here's the difference be. between the NBA. So in the NBA, when you're a kid, when when Clifford starts playing basketball when he's 10 years old or whatever, he's got a chance to get to the NBA without his parents having to be super rich, and because they've got a they've got good grassroots systems, they've got the college system. Mm. You can get drafted. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, who's going to draft Clifford now to go play in, in MLP? But this is where it starts. This might not be Cliff. It might not be me. But <coughs> yeah. it might be the next, you know, the next Cliff. The next Cliff. You know what I'm saying? Like this because, is how it starts. Yeah, but right? again, but you gotta you gotta play tournaments. You gotta spend a lot. You gotta spend sixty thousand yeah. dollars. I already. So be, yeah. So you do the college so, thing. They get, you, yeah. It's all in the college. So you're the, gonna have college. Scholar, scholar, College scholarships. Well, if they do that, then that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is. But but to David's point, like I don't think the answer to making money now or no, trying to build money, a sport yeah. is just to like increase the draw sizes or like increase mm -hmm. the number of teams in the league. Mm -hmm. There are other avenues right now that you should probably be focusing on. One, media, right? Like broadcasting makes up, I would say, nobody's over fifty percent of most people's revenue. Nobody's watching. Nobody's, nobody's watching. watching. So like that should be your primary concern is the fact that nobody's watching but because, because it's the same watching. player like, that play player. every but time. I like, know what's no, gonna no, happen. Like, if, no, no, if people no, are not watching no, Ben this is, Johns, this is what people. No, it's Djokovic. If people are not Djokovic, watching Ben Johns, wait, right? You wait. think they're gonna watch rank number no, no, one hundred and ten that's coming? Yes, they're gonna do it. Let me tell you something. This is what MLP is so good because it's different. Okay, this is for the first time I'm going to see Benjamin playing with other player that is not lose. David. And he's going to yeah. lose. Yeah. Make the ball and he's going to lose. This is deal. what make... I've been in Atlanta in the, the, the last MLP. That was like the best experience ever. Yes. Like the energy, mm -hmm. like everything. It's great. Yes. Again, it is great in person. It does not translate to TV. Like that's okay, the Okay, because they, right do, they don't know how to do that yet. Yeah, it that's does not translate to TV. So like that's yeah. the real problem right now is like, sure, the MLP environment is amazing if you go in person. But it does not translate to TV. Like, when's the last time you saw, like, an ATP 500 or an ATP Challenger on TV mm -hmm. where everybody was hyped up to go watch it? Like, mm -hmm. nobody's watching that. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to watch anybody but the top 10 players. Because it's and it's going to be the same thing for pickleball. But the thing is, you have to find entertainment value for it to go into broadcasting. And they have to find a way to make it more entertaining to watch on TV. Okay. I, that's what but they, they can do it. This is the thing. I would say right now nobody's thinking about it because they got the means, they got the money, they got mm. everything. They can do it. Just get two people they don't have talking about it and mm. do some, <laughs> get some good camera, start filming those matches like on top of it that make me dizzy when I'm watching them. And mm. I don't know. This is how you do it. Like do it like copy like from basketball, There's like from be more variety. football. So here's the thing. Yeah, they gotta make, they gotta speed up the ball. It's slow as it is, and yeah. it, and they're using slow balls. In tournaments, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, reg, the tournament duras are different than the yeah. actual rec duras that we get. They're okay. thicker and they they give a little bit more. Well, so can they you give, feel a little bit more like a Frank? Can like you can you give line. can you give more explanation about that? So they have like different duras. So yes, the pro duras are different than the um, duras that you get in the market. I actually like a couple of people went to a pro tournament, took a few duras and like brought them over. So we compared the two. Mm -hmm. Definitely slower, yeah. So one, um, the pro duras are definitely uh, slower than the regular ones because they're thicker than the regular mm -hmm. ones, which is why like it's Both a bad look on TV when a ball breaks, right? right? And duras are, are notorious yeah, for right. cracking easy. Right, mm -hmm. and like, and there's no, a not, not that when David is playing, so he's been <laughs> playing for five reason, years. No, he never cracked no, one. That, that is a reason that is not true. <laughs> Since <laughs> I've been playing with the Var Varus, oh, oh, you've been oh, breaking oh, balls. <laughs> you have been, oh. I've been breaking balls. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. So take that back. <laughs> yeah, I take, take it back. Don't take away your best <laughs> I, I take it back. But yeah, so the ball is thicker. That's why you don't see as many balls crack on TV. Like, when's the last time you watched a game on TV and saw a Dura crack? Well, they usually just exchange it out pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, they change it out pretty quick when it wears out. But again, like. A Dura cracks before it wears mm -hmm. out when it's hit hard. Like we've we've experienced it. We can have a near oh, yeah. brand new Dura and three games in, it still mm -hmm. looks good, but like 
crack start from wow. it. Yeah. So you guys it's hit hard. Like oval, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas the Pro Duras are definitely thicker. The logo stands out. Like that's the other thing I noticed. Like the logo fades in the rec balls. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There was a ball. I think one of the Pro Duras that we used for like 20, 30 games. The logo was still visible on the ball. Yeah, like, completely visible. It's a different logo too, mm-hmm. though. Uh, yes. Like the the ink's different. The way yeah. they print it is different, and the ball's definitely different. Cause like unlike um mm-hmm. the Duras that we get, where like it just stays hard the whole time. This, after taking a beating, started squishing in my hand a little bit. The Pro Duras did. I'd like hmm. some explanation Yeah, that. so so that was interesting. Like, the Franklins do it, right? Like, you yeah. You, yeah. you take a Franklin and you, like, yeah. you press it down, it, start, it starts to give a little. The Pro Duras did. Not as much as the Franklin, but they did have a little bit of give on it. Hmm. Which, again, interesting because that, that so does you, make it last a lot longer. But it doesn't play as fast because it's not as hard. Table tennis did that to yeah. slow down. Exactly. So yeah. people could enjoy it more. Yeah, so like a one-star more. ball is not the same as a five-star right. ball in table tennis, right? right. Like, that's... Yeah. That's just the way it goes. Like, and in pickleball, that system is there. Nobody's really talking about it. Like mm. the pro, pro balls are different than yeah. the rec balls that we get. They're probably also way more expensive. So obviously they're not going to bring it to market. But yeah, there is a solid difference. And that's, that's what David's talking about. It's like the game has to get faster if people want to watch it. Because dinking does not translate on TV unless no. you understand the game. Yeah. Yeah. So See, but, if you're like a 4 5 5 yeah. player and you're watching players dink back and forth, you're having a great time because you know the talent that it mm-hmm. takes to do that consistently mm-hmm. and to the level that they're doing it at. But if but I'm a new person who's never seen pickleball yeah. in my life before like, and I'm I coming in that, right? and there's just like four guys standing about three feet across yeah. from each other yeah. just tossing a ball back and forth, like <laughs> yeah. that's not entertaining. Like, no, no, it is. How do you make it? It more is. Entertaining? It is. You have to go to go watch my channel. Go. How is that entertaining? Go watch my channel. <laughs> Watch go, go, yeah, yeah go watch Cliff Pickleball. For that has no, no, idea no, no, I'm telling is. you, go watch Cliff Pickleball because uh-huh. this is the good thing. The PPA with the MLP, they have like the top, the top player, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But in my channel, I got the people. So you, you're going to have like a 3.5. And 3.5 playing, 4.0 playing, they're not going to be worried about dinking. They're just yeah. going right. to try to they smash the ball at them. Yeah. But this yeah. is good for them. This is what I'm telling you. This is what we need in the game. I'm not supposed to one yeah to be again, doing you're that. not gonna have a three five and a four oh playing on a tournament in espn like that's that's what we're talking about is trying to figure out a way to make the pro game more interesting and the pro game is not going to become more interesting if they're just going to keep dinking back and forth well, well they have to. why the game needs to speed but up this, or it, you have to find a way to make dinking interesting right and that's what ben was saying right yeah ben was saying have slower paddles yep Make it the uh, the net a little bit wider. Yeah. So now you have more angles. You have more yeah. ability to create without worrying about the ATPs. Yep. That could be a way of making it more interesting. Yeah. Is yeah. Gonna, or incentivize the speed up. Uh, do we want a, a bigger core, like so that now your speed ups don't go out past the baseline anymore? Like now it incentivizes more more speed ups if you make the court bigger. Again, mm. the court's really small. So, like, as you're talking about it, like, mm-hmm. more angles, mm-hmm. right? You make the court right, longer. Right, right, right. But I think this is like, one of... That's going think... to give you more speed-ups, which, mm-hmm. again, will cause a faster game because yeah. people now aren't worried about speeding up and people just... Drops will be harder. Longer. Drops will be a lot harder because the distance is bigger. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of avenues that you could potentially expand because the original idea for pickleball was it was a game for older people it right. was a, it, like that was the original intent behind the game so before Whereas you before you got david trying... step in david changed everything <laughs> listen why you still... okay so you're you're i mean everything that you say now doesn't make sense right yeah, so yeah, because it cover. costs money yes yeah. 100%. just speed up the ball yeah yeah just but make that's the what i'm trying to harder. say is like yeah. if, if you speed up the ball the biggest thing right now is if you just speed up a ball the ball's going out like from the kitchen like, no like, no, most no, of no time, if you do it with the right technique out no. Have you, you ever watched table tennis? Table tennis. Table tennis I mean, that's is a different, different thing. Bro. Like, come on, you can't compare table tennis and pickleball. No, we're playing like, at the table, and yeah. we hit that ball like two sixty yeah, miles per hour. Think it's I could, light. And the ball is like this. Light. I could it's not drop that ball from here to the bathroom. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's so how, you can imagine. That's how light the ball so, is. So, are you telling me you want to make like the softest pickleball in the world and have them play with it? Like, give them like a sponge ball and have them play with that. Uh, uh, so okay. it's not gonna go anywhere. Have you ever seen me playing pickleball with a table tennis ball? No, that would be interesting. Okay, I I sent you the video. <laughs> but yeah, like what's what's our solution? Is do we need to make paddles slower, ball slower? What's the incentive for somebody to speed up? Like how do we incentivize pros to speed up the ball more? See, there's a case for both though, what's more yeah. interesting. Like there's a case to speeding up more and having faster more hands battles is interesting. There's also a case for being more creative and being able to create these angles and this is what take different about. shots. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. a, a case, I can build a case for that yeah. too. 100%. It's more interesting. But how do we get people to do that? Like we we we're gonna we have to come up with solutions for that. Like, and you can't you can't change the court. 
that's all these that's, sports that's, right that's, now. You that's can't the hardest them. thing, you right? Like, yeah, we're making drastic ideas here, but like something's got to give when it comes to the entertainment value of the sport itself. And there's just going to be something that makes the sport more interesting. Okay, What's going to you... make the sport more interesting is to see more people coming in. More professional well, badminton. Well, badminton players then transition. <laughs> what are you talking about, David? Uh, what are you uh, talking tennis, about? Tennis table. I mean, uh, even like ping pong players don't really. What are you? Mean? Got, you know Mike. what they do. They you know what they do. Though. Greg dig at all of us. Table tennis. Um, table tennis, tennis players. players take we need big more tennis strokes. players. We are we are the one that like translate like easily. Like we table tennis players make it like very easy yeah. for them like to. But we to, do it all wrong. Doubles. Also, but badminton we do it all players wrong. have the fastest hands. Yeah, single. He's not the same. Look, AJ. AJ is a better player than you. Now, in what sense? Oh, in yeah, every sense. He's, he's like a hundred years younger than me. Well, he's not about that. But he started when playing. Last like, is, when last did he win? He's, he's beat me play, a double. He started playing like less than two years, yeah, and you have been playing for five years, and you have Four been. Years. Yeah, you have been coaching you, Simone coaching you, mm. Tony. So this is what I'm. This is what I'm talking about. I this is something I was about it. to say. They it have to do something it. like N1. You remember N1? N1 basketball. In yeah, basketball, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they have to create something See, like that. So, in, yeah. They're it's, doing the three-on-three three basketball now. Really? Uh, you haven't seen that? No. It's half court, three-on-three. Oh, three. Three. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Who? Ice Cube. Ice Cube, yeah. 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 I'll tell you what is entertaining, entertainment is uh, beach volleyball. Well, of course they are. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are we recording? Yeah, yeah. We're always recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I've actually started watching women's diving. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> David, so I think... swimming? No? No. Not, 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 not your cup of tea? <laughs> What's up? What's next? All right. Uh, I'll segue into this. All right. We talked a lot about the pro world, and I know... So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go at you. You're going to go at me? Yeah. Let's go, bro. So what, what, what does got? that mean? So I want you like to share your experience. So mm -hmm. for the viewers that is watching you, mm -hmm. so I want you like to 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 explain, like to give, like you give, to give your your story, like mm, small details. So we want yeah. to know you. Yeah, yeah. All right? yeah I, I, I already told him that before we got in here. Yeah, okay. that's that's what we're going next. To. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Get so ready for it. <laughs> Bring it on, buddy. <laughs> so we talked a lot about the pro world and all the players getting signed all the different avenues of accessibility that they have but we do have mike here who's been playing pro for a while played a lot of qualifiers played been pro? through the process oh did you see him in tv <laughs> he was in tv playing oh, johnson yeah, yeah, and johnson yeah. 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 Or, or but, played some big names or yeah. played some big names but what was the process he beat, like he beat for you simone. <laughs> yeah. he did beat simone mm -hmm. he did beat simone but what was the process like for you? Like one coming into the sport from your mm -hmm. like diverse background, shall I put it that way? Sure. Um, but then also like working on your game and then going into the pro scene, like what was the accessibility for you like? Like what was that process like for you to like get into the scene, yeah. go through the qualifications and how's that going for you? Well, you know, I, so I've probably been playing pro for probably about a year and a half. Okay. When I first started going to the pros, like there was no qualifiers. And so that was pretty cool. That was yeah. easy. Yeah. Go in there. I played Simone. Be Simone. Mm -hmm. um, Who was she, she playing with? Federico Staxrude. Oh, that's a good. That's a big win. Yeah. Had some other big wins in that tournament. That's I don't need to win. name all the names, but <laughs> really big names. Whatever. That was that was in Houston probably about a year ago. There was I, I wasn't in qualifiers. I don't even think they had qualifiers. Wow, that's good. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Houston's just coming up again this year. So that'll be fun. But the funny thing is, I'm in qualifiers in Houston. And I've got enough APP points to where I shouldn't be in the qualifiers. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, but so the qualifiers are the worst. They're, they're the absolute worst. You got to go two days, uh, two days earlier. Wow. Yeah, it's it's not fun. And so two, 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 two extra days of hotel, of car rental, of, you know, leaving whatever you got going on at home, job, if you got a job. Um, and then if you don't qualify, you're just done. And that sucks. Yeah, this is yeah, this is the worst. You, you went there for no reason and qualify like, and then you go into the point draw. You know, the point draw is like two points if you win in the point draw, and two points is nothing. Like that doesn't get you anywhere. Oh. You're still gonna be in the qualifier <laughs> the next tournament and the next tournament until you start qualifying. And and I have enough APP points to where I shouldn't qualify, but um, it all also depends on who you're playing with. If your partner has no points, you could have a thousand points, mm -hmm. and your partner can have zero. The understanding is that if your partner has zero, you have to qualify. Wow. It doesn't even matter how many you have. Wow. So that's a problem. Who are you playing with? 
Um, well, since I'd have to do qualifiers again, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm okay. out. I'm not. I, I've already. I just texted him, bro. So I'm not doing it. No. So I'm gonna go play with Ellie. Okay. Yeah. And the thing about the mix is the qualifier is the same day, so I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I've got a lot of points in mix as well, but in men's I shouldn't have to qualify. It's ludicrous because I, I won fourth at New Jersey. Yeah. I beat big teams there too, and um, so I thought I thought my qualifying days Damn. were, and I, even before that I had points. So I don't even understand where those points weren't there from when I beat Simone and them. So I don't know. It's just a, it's just a dumb thing. And then you have the PPA, which also is the same thing. It's just yeah. a whole different fort. Like now you got to go get eight PPA points, APP points, PPA points, two different things. So they just don't translate, obviously, which makes sense. But it's just not a fun, fun thing to have to do. So I remember my, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago. Yeah. You would come like to Cleveland to play. Yeah. I don't know. You had like a that Electrum, like the first one. Yeah, yeah, the first electrum. Yeah. So you would like play against Andre. You say badminton uh-huh. player, they're not good at pickleball. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, bro. So well, I, got, that was, that was I, I think, that was I think if you go like to, to my clip, you're going to see one of the videos. I watched it the other yeah. day. Yeah. One of the video that Andre like smashed the ball at you. Yeah. You were like, I didn't what, know what's what happening. What the, what the heck just happened? <laughs> the ball so, like teleported and then yeah, it just was on me. Yeah. So. F- how did you get where you are right now? What have you done like, mm. for the past two, three years? Like now you you only play pro, right? You just play pro yeah. tournament right now. Well, I just do a lot of I, I do a lot of drilling. Shout out to Brooks, my man. Oh, Brooks. Brooksy. <laughs> He's my drilling partner over in Melbourne. Um, so we drill at least three days a week. Wow. And when we drill three days a week, we drill twice a day on those days. Sometimes we drill more than three days. Sometimes it's four or five. It's just, he's got a job. He's a firefighter, and so okay. he's working. So he can't do it all the time. And then I just try to find other drill partners when I can. Um, so I don't do a lot of rec play. There's times that I feel like I should be doing more rec play, but there's times that I feel like I need to do less. So if I do rec play, I'm usually just going to hang out with, with friends and stuff, and I'll play maybe one night a week. Okay. You know, whether it be in Melbourne Mm-hmm. Or I'll go down to Clear One when I got lessons with Tony. Tony's the coach over at Clear One. So I go down there. Whenever I have a lesson with him, I just sneak in the y'all's group down there. Okay. Uh, but it's mainly just drilling. Like, rec play doesn't, doesn't, most of the rec play that I could play doesn't really help my game. I'm just going for the camaraderie, you know, the the so, society of it. Okay, so when you talk about drilling, what is it exactly you do? Do you have a method? Or? Yeah, well, yeah. So we do a lot of, we start off with dinking straight on. Cross court, me mm-hmm. on the left, him on the right, or him on the left, me on the left, him him on the left, and then we go to the other side, me on the right, him on the right, and then we go straight forward on this side as well, mm-hmm. and then we go. Typically, we go to playing out points, <clears throat> so we go eleven points, uh, rally scoring straight on just at the kitchen. So we dink, dink, you dink one, you dink two, and then you speed up, and then we do a cross court, and then we do the other cross court, and then we do it straight on. Okay. By then, we're usually probably about an hour in. And then we'll usually do some kind of skills type 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 of drill, uh, whether it be resets from the transition, third shot drops, um, whether it be even just serves and returns. We'll spend a lot of time on that. Okay. Maybe we want to work on specific countering, um, like like pancake countering or backhand slide and slide and uh, counter that way. Um, and then after that, we'll go into a lot of skinny singles and just play points that way. Uh, hopefully, we're both working on something at that point. Um, and we're just, even though we're trying to be competitive in the skinny singles, we're still trying to help each other work on that thing. Okay. So, so you did talk about, um, coaching a little bit right there. Yeah. And I know David, you also, um, got coached when you first came into the sport. Like talk to me about actually what not, that process was like. No. <laughs> it was naturally not. good. No, I mean, no, just, actually not. No, I was, no, I was stuck at, uh-huh. yeah. you know, not getting invited to games and that Fair. kind of stuff. And I started. Uh, getting some lessons from Tony and, and you know, uh, got, you know, there was definitely a difference. Yeah. And then, you know, you get, you start getting invited to the high level games because that's, that's, you gotta, you gotta do that. So, you know, you look at those, those kids down in South Florida um, with the, the Julie Johnson mm-hmm. five. I yeah. mean, you know, that's what they're, they're playing yeah. against each other, drilling against, you need that. Yeah, and it's that. definitely an advantage. So I, I remember in Clear One, I, I don't know, BK, you don't know about that, but 
we used to have like a very good level. Yeah. So the pro would come like a winner, like on Friday, Friday stuff. So I'm talking about like maybe three years ago, I wasn't allowed to play with them. Yeah, David, I would watch David playing with those guys. I say, man, I want to be like David. This guy looks good. So that was the, that was the drill like in clear one so it was a very well i mean so it started during COVID. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so we had like a limited yeah. number of spots yeah so you know we had tony and um henry and then you know sometimes they bring some guys over so there was definitely no space for 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 clifford yeah um, <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I okay it. it's okay and, Cl and clifford yeah. really i mean clifford really and I'm going to take like 90% of the the credit for you improving because you only 90 only 90 No, I would say I would say because I would say 95 you suck, you suck okay. because he used to play with with Prince the, with I was playing with oh, yeah, yeah I was playing on. with Prince and then I, I gave him an elongated cuz the first time he played with the the, the MX uh, engage oh, yeah. Six MX 60 yeah. the OG uh -huh. power paddle <laughs> and like <laughs> ripping with the, the wristy Over, backhand overnight Mm -hmm. He changed. Mm -hmm. So you think Overnight. you think it's the paddle, right? It was absolutely it, no, the it's paddle. not even the paddle. I think it was you. <laughs> because you sucked the previous day. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what he's talking about, this is true. I remember that I was playing like with that Prince paddle because since I come from table tennis and that paddle was like mm. the closest I can yes, think. Yes, it was rounded. About like, I thought mm. he's going to be, he's going to translate like a table tennis mm. racket. But no, oh, mm. man, I was wrong. So when he gave me that paddle <laughs> from Engage, and yeah, I was used. I I liked the feel, and yeah, they were yeah. good back in the day. I, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're not good now, but they were good. Like the it was it the the white one. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah I, I like it those. was. It, That's like everybody. Yeah, first and it changed my. I'm not gonna say it changed my game. So I was able to do stuff I can do with, with the paddle yeah. that I couldn't do with the Prince paddle. Yeah. Mm. It just pops off that thing. Yeah. And I thought I was playing well with the Prince paddle. Mm -hmm. So after that, I sneak in like in the group. And yeah, got yeah. your butt whooped a couple times, and you got better. So <laughs> this is this is where I want to get you, Mike. So if you want, like, to do like a summary of mm -hmm. anybody that is watching you right now, if they want like to improve a little bit, they yeah. say they they because we all start from there, right? Yeah. I don't know, David. Mm -hmm. When I start, I remember that the old lady, like that, was like playing in clean one day didn't even want to play with me because I, I didn't know what it was nothing I, maybe it was not your maybe it's because, <laughs> your, because of your personality I mean, maybe because of your personality no because I, 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 also your accent is pretty pretty oh, heavy oh yeah yeah the yeah. accent like, that's what it was Amer I don't think I'm American <laughs> no, no offense Americans are not great at at you know I barely understand them now Do you, uh, did you start like that too hmm <laughs> because I can tell you have an accent. I mean, to he, it. he grew up in Africa, so uh, sorry, I didn't understand that. What was that, Cliff? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, seriously, uh, I remember. I say, but this is this is <laughs> nobody knows about that story yet. Yeah? Mm. My friend, I don't know if you remember, like Octavio, right? Octavio, Sam, man. they get they get to the game to the pickleball because they used to be my partner playing table tennis, mm. right? And they was like forcing me like for month, like you should. Try that thing. It's fun. Yeah. I say, give me along. I'm not going to waste my time mm. like playing mm. pickleball or stuff like that. And they bought me like two paddles. Mm. I just eh, leave me alone. And one time I tried, I say, mm -hmm. mm. okay. And next day I wanted to play again. And those people, they say, eh, you're not good enough to play with me. Eh, okay. Mm. So I couldn't mm. get a game. So I didn't mm. know what to do. But after that, I play like maybe two, twice a week. The next time I place against them, like after one week, I beat them. They say, okay, mm. what the heck just happened? You cannot mm. even get the score. You don't know nothing about the rules, mm. nothing. You just beat us. So what I mean by that, I have like a very extinct, extinct like background in sport. Mm. Okay. For me, it was just like question, like translate everything like from other sports to pickleball. What's, what other sports? Oh, we're playing? not going to talk about that, David. If you know where I come from, you know my main yeah, sport. That's why I'm asking. Okay. So what I mean by that. Didn't you play soccer? Yeah. How does that translate to pickleball? Oh, yeah. Have you, see, have you seen my footwork? <laughs> <laughs> this is why you say I'm, I'm fast like that. Uh, but uh, what I like want you to understand. He does hit the ball with his head sometimes. Mike, so when <laughs> you first start, did, yeah. you, did you start like a, 
like a 2.5 or 4 when you start playing like yeah. for the first year or first well, six I, months? I played my first tournament at 3.5. No way. I never had the yeah. chance to play. <laughs> with my buddy and then I played with my wife the same tournament. Me, me and my buddy won gold at 3.5. Mm. Me and my wife failed miserably. Uh. <laughs> I was talking with Sandra about it yesterday. So this is why I yeah. want to ask you like if you have like a, I don't know, some tip for yeah. for the people that is watching you right now. So if the quickest way like to yeah. get from that 3.5 yeah. To like, I'm not talking about like 5.5 who want to play pro, but at least to be like a solid like four. So what yeah. what what should I they mean, do? First of all, like you've got to. So people don't even know what they don't know is a problem. Okay. You know. Uh, so yeah, coaching is obviously the biggest part of it to getting better. Okay. Unless you're coming from a high level tennis already or a high level sport, and you can look and you can dissect the game pretty easily and say, hey, okay, they're they're doing this. Why am I not doing this? But all these people that are just coming in, just, just playing for the fun of it, it's great. But for me, what really determines if you can go to higher level and higher level is how often you can get that ball into the kitchen. Okay. And obviously, you know, there's three, five players. They're not, that's not what they're no, doing. No, this is, they're just don't kids. talk to them about that. No, they don't, they don't know no. that primarily you should be resetting through the transition. If what the is resetting? Low. They're just, they just want to hit. They feel like if you just hit, you know, yeah. things will work out. Yeah. But you're at an extreme disadvantage in the transition. But if you don't know that until somebody tells you, which is what coaching would, would do for you, you know, if you go and have some coaching, they'll say, hey, why are you swinging on a low ball that's at your ankles from the trip from, from five feet off the kitchen? You know, it's not going to work. Okay. Um, so I think coaching is kind of the key. And then obviously just taking what the coach tells you and drilling it. Okay. So what I think about that's, paddle? What that's about paddle? Uh, well, one, that's a big misconception I feel in the pickleball world mm -hmm. is people believe coaching is just for beginners. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people understand right. how much coaching like a four oh four five five oh player goes through on a monthly right. basis because like no matter what level you're at, like mm -hmm. as you said, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So a coach is a great way for you to improve your game, even as an intermediate to an advanced player. And I think that's something that a lot of people miss out on yeah. is because they don't think a coach can help because yeah. they're already at a four oh or four five level. Or even like, five. All I need to do is just train my game. But that's not how the sport works. No. That's not how any sport no. works. Like NBA players have coaches yeah. like Federer and Nadal Djokovic have coaches. Like, yeah. I think that's a misconception that a lot of people have to address is the fact that, you know, if you're actively trying to get better at a sport, you do need somebody that's, you know, a has a skill set in coaching that's going to be able to come in, right. look at your game, tell you what you can do better, tell you what you're doing well, that's wrong. That's their and, like, job. Show you also, things, tape right? your games. Yeah. Tape, yeah. Record so, your games. That's a big deal. I think that's one That's one that I think definitely um, a lot of viewers out there should probably check into is, uh, you know, no matter what level you're at, coaching is something that, that will help you. So uh, try to do as much of it as you can. And as, as Mike said, like once you get coached and you have things to work on, go out and drill. Like yeah. once you get to the higher levels, drilling helps more than rec play. So that, that's just something that you definitely need to focus on. But going back to David's, point about um you know the paddles um mm. coming in as well um i know i started out with uh as most people did with either a selkirk or an engage right. i had the selkirk epic for the longest time the original amp version and then i moved on to the engage mx the uh the graphite paddle at mm -hmm. the time which uh again og uh power paddle shout out mm. to them oh, yeah but uh how much of a difference has it made like or have you seen in your game from like going through different paddles i know all of us here have tested at least like yeah, 10 20 30 paddles yeah, at this yeah. point so oh, no we've been I, through ringer yeah more yeah, yeah. than all, me all i can mm -hmm. definitely me and david we can that. even yeah. count exactly yeah. so like going through all those different paddles like do you see that that legitimately makes a difference to your game like hmm. not just talking about price point i know there's 250 dollars price right. point paddles out there 300 dollars paddles but legitimately some people would be better off with a hundred dollar paddle or 150 fifty dollar paddle if it's right sure. for their game so like how do you think that plays into it like how do you go about selecting a paddle david well so uh the most important thing for me is control mm -hmm. right so I, I just got the the new uh gearbox um, i wanted to ask to you yeah, about I, that I paddle that because out. everybody I, is I saw, talking about yeah, it what do so, you think i mean it was i mean it was like i'm a big gearbox fan so the, i know that the best, <laughs> i know that so one of the <laughs> i know one that of my favorite all-time paddles with it was the gx5 control 85 and i oh, you know yeah, love I love the fact that, 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 that was the first time i saw david was when he they've got a paddle. carbon <laughs> um core so it doesn't get soft and, and all that kind of stuff um but so they've been hyping this 
pedal like crazy. And I mean, yeah. I know the YouTube YouTubers. I mean, they're doing it for money. Um, you know, so I you know, know, I just oh. expect them to. Think so? Oh yeah. They're sold out. Huh? You think they sold out? Yeah, because they oh, did try it. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you think about the paddle? I think absolutely. I played yeah. yesterday against you with that paddle. One yeah. one of your favorite reviewers are making 200k a year. Hmm. You know, with what 15,000 that subscribers? That doesn't wow. mean they're lying about the paddle. No, I think they are. So, <laughs> okay. so, so, so Dave, Dave is the OG. No, paddle no so they, yeah. they, so they're, knows. they're lying. Right. So, so, uh, so let me so, give you let me so give you a little bit of context. Hype. Yeah, if you don't know about David, this is what he does. Every single paddle that comes like to the market, David gonna have it. He's gonna buy it. He's gonna Overnight play it. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Overnight. Yeah. Yeah, so, this is what David's always been the first person yeah. to have a new pedal in right. his hand, always. Right. So, and you've you've played with with the new. So, so yeah. it's been touted a, a game changer. And all right. So I played played with it yesterday the entire day. And how many um, matches? Uh, uh, six or seven matches. Like, right. So I, I think you were. If you no, I think you played yesterday. Yeah, seven matches. Seven matches. And a yeah. singles match. Okay. And, <laughs> and you have a singles game. Okay. Uh, right. So um, out of the box, I had to slap a lot of lead on it because it it does on the edges. It's kind of like and, and especially on the like the top edge, um, it feels a little bit kind of unstable. Mm -hmm. So so I, again, I don't think the sweet spot is as big. Maybe it's an improvement. Um, <coughs> then on power, I think it plays like a Legacy Pro. Okay. So that's, wow. that's, yeah, you got, that's yeah. number one. It yeah, felt yeah. it felt like my Legacy Pro. Um, now I'm going to say this: my Legacy Pros, both of them delaminated within a month. Quick. Okay. Quick. Of right. course quick. they're going to. Yeah. They, yeah. Very quick. yeah. So with this with this uh, gearbox, I know this thing is going to last me five yeah. years. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it is making me. It, it's slower at the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, the control. So when I'm playing when against. Uh, just hand speed. Hand speed, got it. Got it. Oh, I, but if I I was watching like a review on YouTube, they, uh, the the guy says the paddle is fast at the kitchen. He was fast. He's talking about him. moving his hands. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I mean anybody. You can take a nine nine ounce paddle and you can do this all day long. But can you? Yeah, yeah you can know, you actually so, move over, across yeah. your body? So okay. it's it's significantly slower than the. I mean, the last two paddles that I've been playing is the Varus and the and the, uh, the Yola Scorpius fourteen, mm -hmm. which is significantly faster. Mm -hmm. um, then obviously, you know, control. You know, it's a power paddle. Uh, control is not there. So. It's a great paddle if I'm playing against, um, you know, a lower level player like AJ. Mm -hmm. if I'm AJ playing, is not a lower level player. Hey, come on. If I'm playing, if I'm playing against a higher level player uh, like like Mike, I need to keep the ball alive. Mm -hmm. And with that paddle, it's it's tougher. Mm -hmm. So it's tougher in this. Um, I have to say, it's got tremendous spin. So finally, yeah. Gearbox is making yeah, paddle some spin. Yeah, it's got some spin on it. Oh yeah, it's got a lot of spin. Um, and I will have. A lot of success with that paddle playing in a four or five tournament. Playing pro, no. So, do you remember like a few weeks ago we have a guest playing with us and yeah, yeah. I, I remember I remember yeah. playing against her with that paddle. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. To me, the biggest thing that I noticed playing against that paddle was the sound. Like, it I don't know if like people have played with right? the play with the <coughs> diadem vice, the illegal mm -hmm. paddle with the yeah. This is how it sounds. But yeah. it sounds it sounds quieter it's like than muted. a normal paddle. Yeah. Like, did you well, did you get no, that playing no, against it? Like, no. I definitely felt no. playing and against that paddle. It sounded muted. No, mm. you're no, it it doesn't sound different. So here's the thing: like the 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 YouTubers are now comparing it to EVA foam paddles, and and I've got a I've got a yeah. vice. I got a vice. Mm -hmm. Of course they paid Yeah, off. of course they got a vice. Got <laughs> it's not yeah, even close to the vice. So it's not close to EVA foam. Um, so, f you know, it, it doesn't sound different. Well, you were playing with it. I'm talking playing against it. It definitely sounded quieter. Like the speed of the paddle face on the ball, like the impact did Probably not make a difference on the sound Look, at all. Like, this is what I realized. It is a powerful paddle. Yeah. It is a this very is, powerful is, paddle. But this for is the what amount is, of power that was coming back, like, but it, but this normally is not, you can tell with the sound. Like yeah. there, yeah. There is some translation to how hard somebody hits it with how yeah, it sounds off sure. the paddle. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that with the gearbox. Like a dink sounded the same as a full-on drive against that gearbox paddle. This is this mm. this is what I realized. Mm. That 
that person that come like to to play with us he was visiting she's from Houston she's she played pro <laughs> and she was playing with my 4.5 guy because somebody told him Clifford got a like advanced group so but usually you know we play on Tuesday but mm-hmm. it was a Monday I think mm-hmm. I was teaching or, or, okay yeah so I she was playing with the four five I'm talking about Sam like Victor four five yeah really oh come on David <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so she was like man I say that paddle is delaminated what the, what is the, that paddle she's playing with so mm-hmm. she's like the two handle it's crazy her drive is just like crazy yeah, paddle is this? yeah my guys my game. guys was like struggling like I say mm-hmm. okay I, I I finished teaching I say okay I, I need to get a little bit closer. Yeah. I need to see what is yeah. going on. So they say, oh, she say she's a pro, pro and she was actually looking for you, stuff like that. Okay, I put my shoes on, mm. I get my virus. I say, let's see what's going there. So we play a few games together. So I was playing with her. Mm. So it was bad, like Seems for unfair. the first, yeah, <laughs> it's not, it's not fair. So this I mean, is why you I see the day, him, him the day after that, oh, yeah. The, yeah, the day. So I don't know how good y'all are playing. <laughs> yeah, the day after that, I bring her like to Tuesday. So mm. now you're gonna play against my guy now. Let's see how well you can control the ball. Yeah. She mm. can control the no. ball. That was so, the biggest thing we explored. Yeah. Like, so uh, everything like Tatiana, she plays with gear. She's sponsored by Gearbox. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can, she's she's a good great player. She's tennis, tennis she, background. She's like, great. Yeah, great. Like player. I can imagine her like oh, playing yeah. single was, with that paddle. The ball hard. Yeah. 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 It was just the Oof. control was definitely again, <laughs> she just got the paddle because it's so But again, she doesn't play with an elongated paddle. So she so she was she was waiting for the, yeah. the shorter version so yeah. this is what i'm telling you she's a high level player and okay, she's control. struggling with the power right. to control so it to control this is it. what like I the don't power get. shots were great but the control shots this were is what i don't get mm-hmm. this is what i don't get mm-hmm. so every time i see like somebody you excited about a paddle that is too fast i say eh, yeah, what are you doing yeah mm-hmm. yeah unless you're playing pro it doesn't matter. You're not gonna see pro playing with that paddle that much because if well, you, you, they might play single, I've it's perfect. For, well, yeah. Well, no. Two well, 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 what I'm saying is like, you look at all the double twos out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you look at. I mean, granted, you know, those guys are good, but will they be will they be able to control those double twos with a real Dura versus the softer Duras on on? On the tour, I, I don't think so. I think people definitely struggle. The zero like, zero two is good. It is a very very good paddle. Again, they're going away I, with it, not making them anymore. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of happy about that because I'm tired of those things, <laughs> especially the white ones. Right? That's the white ones are bullshit. David, we're, yeah, not, yeah. we're not go, we're not gonna talk about that again. Okay. No, again, I okay. Right. Just it's a full dis- full disclaimer. I played against the Gold Lux a couple days ago. Uh-huh. It is bad. Really? Well, this is, is this is why I want to get you. Off that zero, Le- zero, yesterday, speed, it's not coming off at that speed, but you cannot tell That's what it's coming problem, off light. Like. Like let, let me. Tell I can either be early or late because I don't know yeah. where the ball is. Yeah. Like, I, I legitimately just completely lose. I'm it gonna off tell the you face. something. It you try bad. you try the locks yesterday. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What yeah. do you think about it? The, the the new circle. If I'm honest, it was pretty dead. Yeah, it was yeah. tough. Yeah, couldn't I? I see. And that's the thing is like when I was trying to do counters like that person was swing but like the ball's coming i can't tell how fast it's coming right, so right. honestly i was early on You're a lot of these this well, because yeah. i'm just like trying to anticipate because i cannot physically see the ball so i'm like oh it's got to be around here somewhere what a bad why you can't you should not it's be like visually it's like, just it's bad that. yeah and, and it's not like it's not like he had a white shirt or anything that. and like we talked about it before the game like we were just trying to see how the paddle would do in a yeah. field test so like that's really why we did it um but yeah like it, on, on a field test like legitimately mm. could not see the ball coming off of it it was bad Okay, so good for you, Brian. I want this is for you, <laughs> yeah, Brian. Because the two, the two new locks you have, one is blue and the the other one is red. Good for oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah, thank yeah. God for that. Yeah, but still, he wears a white shirt. So oh, you know, that's not purpose. Like, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Come on, he's trying to keep his spot on the uh, Tuesday game. Oh my goodness, gotta win some to keep your spot. All right, so but let's talk about uh, cheating in pro pickleball. Yeah. Mike, you know all about that. <laughs> all I do is Mike, cheat. have you played against uh, James Ignatovich's white 002? I have not played against that. It's, it's faster than It's faster normal. than anything else. It's there. faster than normal, yeah. is my understanding. Yeah. Um, Why is that? It's special? And the same thing oh, with... No, the O2 is fast the, in itself. Uh, and the fact that it is white and you can't see the ball coming off of it is is 
worse. I would like, call that way cheating. worse. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing, well, it's brought, it's not, no, I mean, it's cheating in, in, you in, know, in a moral sense, in, the, in, an, in an ethical sense, yes, yeah. but legally it's, it's completely it's, fine. It's like, the yeah. same way that you know people are showing up with a certain set of paddles uh, at PPA events and different paddles at MLP events. Hey. Yeah. yeah. What yeah, are we talking about here? Hmm? There's two. Who are we talking about? Well, I know of, I know of at least ten. Well, <laughs> so here's the thing: Dang. there were 24 paddles that right. failed the test at the most recent MLP, right? Wow. Because the PPA doesn't test anymore; like, they don't do on-field like testing Va- anymore. Va- Varus was the, was in the MLP, and he did it pass. Didn't, it yeah, it, it, so there are 24 paddles. Again, these are the top 96 players in right. the world. So these are the players that are playing all the PPAs. 24 of those failed so every like single one of those failed. failed and it's the same paddle that they're using in the ppa so, like and and i don't know how many people changed it for the mlp so there's got to be more right, in the ppa that, is, that are completely so, illegal. so irina tereshenko shows up with eight paddles why do you need eight paddles yeah because she knows they're gonna fail yeah there's two main culprits right two main companies the paddle tech mm-hmm. right and the yola yes yeah, and I think I think there's also that and Selkirk, but I mean Selkirk sponsors. Yes, yeah. their deflection stuff, so. on the O2s oh, yeah. is pretty wild. It's but pretty wild. There are others out there. I mean, like any thermoform paddle right now, honestly, like the Legacies, the Vadix, all of them would would you know delaminate over time and like some faster than others. So mm-hmm. like these but are the, all paddles that are gonna have there's problems. There's a key. There's a key for you like to prevent that. It's not because I'm bragging, but when you understand how that things work, so there's a way you can do that that your paddle doesn't delaminate it. Sure, if it's if it's within the rules, you can do it. It doesn't make it right, but yeah. So, do you think the rules need to change? Like again, I we don't have a listen, we anybody, don't have a set of rules that is listen. you know pickleball wide right now. It's PPA has a separate thing, USAPA right. yeah. has a separate thing, MLP why, has a separate thing. Why does the USAPA still exist? Great question. Um, in any case, so everybody's getting upset that pickleball is not in the Olympics. Right. Number one is on, only only America plays it. Exactly. Right. Um, exactly. Number two is I'm no not, dr- I'm not, I'm not there's no drug you. testing. Yeah, I'm, there's I'm, no I'm, drug okay, testing. Okay, the drug testing is like <laughs> there's no paddle testing. Mm-hmm. There, there's you paddle know, testing. Uh, yeah. You, oh, the I mean, paddle testing needs to change. No, the paddle yeah, testing yeah, is yeah. weak. It's weak. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's I weak. mean, with all the pro XRs going through, and yeah. now all this nonsense. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, mean, again, there's a ways to go before pickleball becomes an Olympic sport. Like. Yeah, again, like the Olympics are worldwide. Like you got to have yeah. at least a few countries that are yeah, playing like, it for you. How much are they? Seventy? Yeah, there's just something. There's a there's a number that you yeah, have to I have. Yeah, I think seventy. Yeah. And right I'm gonna now, put it in my own country too, play. pretty soon. So I'm gonna give you one country at least. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm take, gonna give. I'm it, taking it to India. So. Yeah, since yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. since I'm getting up there. Since I'm from two countries, so I'm gonna put it like in in both countries. I'm not gonna take it to South Africa. My passport expires. If he goes back, they won't let him. It just takes too much time to renew it. Talk about inefficient government. Oh, uh, let's, let yeah. me give you a secret. Uh, my, one of my country doesn't even have like an embassy here in the U.S. So it's impossible for me like to get a passport. Mm. Uh, I have to do. travel. Like I have to travel, go back to the country <laughs> and before I can get a passport. Uh. So this is, this is even Are worse. there any flights and back to you might not be able to come back? Haiti? I don't know how that You got to take a cruise ship to no Haiti probably. I'm out of that <laughs> topic, I think. I don't, I don't know about that topic. Because I, I just don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But I don't like, need it. Yeah, I, I I don't have any proof. Yeah, well, well, we so let's we have, let's we, keep talking about the yeah, paddle, yeah. yeah. So we have we have talked a lot about the pros and their paddles, what they've been using, and all that, mm. all all of those things. Um, what do you think the difference is in their game per mm. se versus you know a regular five zero or everywhere else that you play? Like you play in our group a lot. What do you think difference is between playing against us and then playing against those higher level players? Like, what do you see that they do differently yeah. that puts them up there? They understand the game a little bit different than than the five O's. Mm-hmm. They understand what the game really is, and 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 most of it is really. I'm not going to say playing slow, but it's playing safe. Mm-hmm. You can't if you can't make a shot ten out of ten times, then you don't know that shot well enough, and you shouldn't be taking that shot. Like if your speed ups, you, you know, you make. Five out of ten, yes, you don't. You can't be speeding up. That's not a good because you're gonna miss five of them, and then five, some of them are gonna come back, and you're gonna lose some of them. That's a negative percentage. Mm. So I think understanding the statistics of what works and what doesn't work, and how to how to how to manipulate the game correctly. Like 
if you understand that this person across the, 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 the net from you has really fast hands, why would you speed up at them anyway? Like you've got to find ways to get around the deficiencies that your team has mm -hmm. compared to the other team. And I don't think a lot of people are thinking that much. I don't think a lot of people are yeah. trying to understand because at the pro level, pretty much everybody has the same shots. Mm -hmm. You don't have special shots that somebody else doesn't have. At yeah. the four fives and the three O's, and they, yeah, people got better shots. But at the pro, everybody's got the same shots. It's who can make the adjustments and then make the adjustments to those adjustments. And mm -hmm. then your team makes the adjustments to those adjustments. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understanding the different things that you can do and making the right adjustments. Yeah. So when you when you go to a pro event and you look at the draw, like, do you spend any time studying your opponents at all? Or is that oh, something yeah. you just like do on the fly once you step on court? Yeah, so it depends on who it is. But yes, I have a good understanding, uh, I should say, a, a, a semi-decent understanding of pretty much every decent player mm -hmm. at the tournaments I go to. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely formulating a game plan prior. Yeah, again, that, that does make a big difference because it is something that I see a lot of like four or five players, like stuff like that. When they go into a tournament, right. they have no idea what they're going to do. And, yeah. you know, I always say like, the first three shots of any point, like for the most part, you should already know what you're going to do before you step on the court. Well, you specifically, like you yes. yourself yes, has exactly. a blueprint. Like, yeah, like, like you have, this is the way I like to play. Yep. This is what I'm going to do. If the ball goes here, I typically go here, mm -hmm. goes here, here, and then you can make adjustments off of that. Exactly. So that's something that I, I don't think a lot of rec players do. Like one, right. a lot of rec players don't know where they're going to serve. They don't know where they're going to return. Right. Like they don't know where they're hitting the third. Are they going to drive or drop it? What their plan is at all. But I think, like, once you get to that higher level, like, do you go in formulating more of a game plan for certain players? Or do you go in with a set strategy before the game? Like, I'm going to try my try hitting middle serves or, like, right. hit my returns middle and then hit my drops to, like, this person. And then and then if the game plan needs to change, I'll make adjustments on the fly. Or mm -hmm. or do you just go in there and see see what happens? Yeah, no. So, I, I like I say, I know most of the people that I'll be playing against. Mm -hmm. Most of them, anyway. So, I have a good understanding if, if I have... A better way of playing this person like if, if i feel like he's got slow hands great yeah. like if that's what was happening in new jersey there's certain people that i thought have slow hands that i'm okay with just speeding up at them and getting in that hands battles um sometimes i feel like maybe i don't have faster hands than them and i don't want to get in that mm -hmm. so i'm going to be spending more time slowing it down dinking um, so i got certainly have my blueprint with the way i like to get up to the net and then what i like to do after then but I'm going to make adjustments based on who it is. Nice. Yeah, so I'm going, to have a, I'm going to have a game plan for those individuals, which is different than somebody else. Yeah. yeah. I know David just likes to, you know, hit his backhand dinks and, and see how far it'll no, take actually, him. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. I do put in a lot of work, BK. So um, <laughs> the first thing I do is I go look up their dupers. Not their YouTube, because USAPA is useless. Yeah. But I go look up their dupers, mm -hmm. and I play 95% to the guy with the lowest duper. Okay. Solid strategy. Yeah. I like that. I just like, you know. Yeah. But again, it, do you find that there are times where, you know, a player with a lower duper might just be because um, they haven't played enough tournaments and then you, again, have to make adjustments on the fly? Or are you just finding that the rating's fairly no, accurate for the most part? No, just attack one player. Let him feel the pressure. Yeah. You know. Until he breaks. Until he breaks. <laughs> breaks to your <laughs> will. Until he breaks. <laughs> they I will mean, break. Like if you see 95% of all the balls, like if we, uh -huh. if I play against you, I always, I attack your backhand. 100%. Right? 100%. Don't you feel the pressure? Because like, why am I getting picked on? Yeah. I mean, again, if you notice me playing against you more now, like I don't hit your backhand at all. Like no, if just, I'm dinking you, you I'm, just, dinking, I'm no. dinking your middle you're now. Just, I'm always trying to dink your middle and speed up and, your partner because then I can go one-on-one. Because yeah, on one. I don't want to go cross-court with you. you. I drive, love going down the line and, with you. Yeah, and you drive, I'm not gonna go and you cross drive court with you. everything yeah. you... I mean, because you like to play with delaminated paddles. <laughs> that's no, no, a no, lie. See, that's see, a lie. See, that's true. We can that's test true. my paddle right now. Test my paddle right now. Actually, David, I enjoy that. I... I don't get to use it like a lot, but I enjoy when I've been targeted. Mm. Usually people, they don't target me, but I would enjoy it like being targeted. So you see, if you see that match, we So played, who was targeted when you guys lost, when you guys got one point against Tyson? And <laughs> we didn't even know. <laughs> Can you remember anything that happened in this match? Yes, I do remember. Okay. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I remember exactly what happened. I, I couldn't. Because there was no... So there he was got no targeted. video. There was yeah, no I video. Exactly. You, you, yeah, you the video got erased. You lost the video uh, on that game because oh, I, I was still, excited to watch it. I no, still got like, six minutes of that. That game. was the whole match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my my 
I, I couldn't like you know they don't allow you like to to record like yeah. in the yeah, yeah. championship court so i couldn't do it i told my friend come on give me a hand mm -hmm. and forget okay. but i got some point because somebody sent me some point but the point we made david it wasn't like that bad mm -hmm. we have to fight sometimes but the, mm -hmm. this guy they don't make mistake mm -hmm. i mean so so like four years ago you got five points against Simone and Ben. Oh, this is what I want with, to come with, by. No, with the with, with Mark Dupotovich. You get that was me That's like impressive. four years. That now. was me like three. <laughs> you get no. you got oh, a okay. much better partner, like <laughs> way better. <laughs> you only get one point. So, so how does your trajectory look, David? That was like two years ago. How, mm. how long was that tournament? It was a while back. Yeah, two years ago, David. Come on, mm. we got we we got way better than that. But you know my thing. I don't train, David. Mm. I don't train. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a pro. Every David. time yeah. I'm at yeah. clear one, you're there. I'm not. What do you do I, there? I, I teaching people, David. Wow. This is what I do. I'm not trying to be a pro, David. Not mm. yet. Mm. It's like be those the, the, those that don't have talent teach. Is that what yeah. it is? Mm. <laughs> it's not what it is. But because uh, rem <laughs> remember, teaching is not about talent. How well can you play? Uh. Uh, Messi, if you watch soccer, Messi cannot do what his coach is doing even he's mm. one of the best player like in the world so this is mm. what i'm telling you coaching is is like a skill this is another skill it's nothing mm. to do like with your capacity are like, you a to good play coach a sport. i don't think so do you have a business card yeah no uh, <laughs> he's in my bag get me in my bag yeah not good enough mm. to coach you apparently mm. i'm not gonna coach david <laughs> no, this i've is, seen his back end this thing. Is, that's why i'm not asking so, you to coach uh, me. Uh, this is this is call. the uh, this is the thing with david or with a coach, a good coach. So you can see like through people. Mm -hmm. You can see some people, they just like, okay, they can reach like a certain limit. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, if David want like to, let's say, to become like a 6.0 and pro, mm -hmm. Mike is gonna take Mike like, I don't know, five months, but David, mm -hmm. it might take him like two years. Okay, so this is, this is something like a coach can see mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. you. Okay, but most of the time people they don't have the patience like, <coughs> to wait like for the two years before they can like right and get the where they want to be. Yeah. Losses, yeah. So, mm -hmm. but if you have the patience, David, you can do it. This is what I'm telling everybody. People think, oh, I cannot be a pro. Yes, you can. You you can if well, you. Well, I but tell you what, you're gonna have to work harder and longer sometimes. But I, you 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 can become a pro if you want. I know. I I had that dream, but Steve Kuhn killed it. Nah. You know, signing <laughs> ninety. You know, instead of putting that forty-one million into prize money, they didn't have a senior division anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, he's not I'll that join old. the NP NPL. <clears throat> yeah, he's not that old. Oh my goodness. Just again, going back to what brought you to the sport. Um, for anybody that's coming into the sport mm. right now, uh, what advice would you give them based on your background, based on like what you've done before yeah. to you now coming in? Like, what advice do you have for people that are looking at pickleball and being like, Hey, maybe that's something I'd like to do. I feel like you should, you should make friends with a better player. Like that's <laughs> what you should do. Like they, you probably just can't go and be like, Hey, can I get a game? And they're not going to play with you. Yeah. But if you make friends with them, if you bring them a beer, well, you pay them, them. you pay bring them a beer, <laughs> bring them a beer, pay them. They'll be like, all right, bro, this guy, he's been around for but three weeks, bring me beer every week. Come on. It's the pen, it's the pen. That's Why how we got to. That's how we got the, the Friday game started. I had to pay I had to pay Tony and Henry. Say, give us, you know. Uh, did you really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Do you still pay him? No. I mean, no. <laughs> it's, I, it's too good. Listen, now. so I no. So when uh, the Tuesday game started at at or, or, Orlando oh. Racket Sports, mm -hmm. and um, I called Tony and said, Tony. Um, you know, come play with us. We mm -hmm. want to get this game. He said, no. No, he said, yeah, 150 an hour. I said, <laughs> Joker, bro. Let me <laughs> check. <laughs> let me Tony. check. Let me oh, check. What a legend. Boy. Shout let's out Tony Giannone. I can, Giannone. Yeah, I can <laughs> see these uh, yeah. guys uh, pitching in. And yeah. Uh, so is the pen to what you want to do. Mm. If you want to have friend, like have a good time, yeah. It doesn't matter. Just come and get a pattern and right. start playing because right. you're going to enjoy. You're going to have the time have of your time. life. Yeah. But, but if you want to become... That's changing, like, though. Yeah, life, life changing. If you want to, I don't know, to do that for a living or you want to be like, I don't know, and then you say, okay, I got a client that say, okay, Cliff, uh, in one year I want to be like, I don't know, like playing 4-5. Yeah. 
with stuff like that. It's easy. Let's go. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take your lessons, drill twice a day, three, four, five times a week, and then you quit go your home, job. Quit your job. Quit your so you job, can drill <laughs> and then you go twice home, a day. You work out. You do your you do you do your footwork drills. You do your leg work drills. You do your muscle building drills. You do your cardio drills, and then you do your court time. Like yeah. this, it's yeah. but it's a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. It's mm-hmm. not easy. And now it was easier when we when we start, David, because pickleball yeah. wasn't Different that now. like very popular. Well, it's, it get, well, it's getting Different tougher now. because I mean, like, now it's you getting can't tougher. get space on the public court anymore. Oh, don't I mean, talk about like public like court here in Florida. You're just nuts. It's ridiculous. And the fact that they're wanting to change to where you can't like I'm, this is probably conf- controversial to some people. But if you can't just get your group of four and play, yeah, okay, you got to come off the court, and but you can go back on the court as your group of four, and you don't have to mix in with everybody. They should never be able to tell you that you have to mix in with everybody. Yeah, I mean, so so the the local court that I started at, uh, I'm not gonna. Can I? Well, well let's no, let's the, give a little bit of context here. So so here's here's some context, right? We have this court, this facility in Orlando. Um, you can look it up if you want. I'm not gonna name the name. But there is a really popular facility that used to be where a lot of the advanced players would try and yeah. meet up on I mean, Mondays was, and Wednesdays. People used to and it drive was from Tampa to come yeah. play there. This was one of the premier flight. places where all the advanced players would play. You know, Cliff's one of those that was out there. David probably started around there. Uh, the yeah. Pirates started around there. Like a lot, a lot of like really good pickleball players. That was their first experience of advanced play. Yeah. And they've had a model for a very long time, which was doing well. They had a couple challenge courts. They had a winners and losers system. They had about six courts when they first started. Now it's up to 10. And there is a system in place where, again, winners would stay on and split. And then they'd uh, rotate amongst themselves next to people to come on. If two people wanted to stay together, if they won two or three games, they would step off the court and give other people a chance. And there's this just a community way of going about doing things. And they had two challenge courts so that the advanced players could try and, you know, make their way up. And as Mike said, like, it's a great way for you to go and meet those higher level players is because when there is a challenge court, all you have to do is just go there, put your paddles in, and you're guaranteed to find a game against some Mm -hmm. good team that's out there that's been winning. And again, you know, if you wanted to make a change or somebody's playing on there for too long, two or three games, they come off and you rotate in. So it's a great way to run a facility. It's a really popular facility. So their numbers were really high. Mm -hmm. And then very recently, not more than a few days ago, they have completely changed their system and now it is a um, community-based system is how I'll put it. It's all based around inclusivity. And what the idea is, is that when you go to the facility and even if you have a group of four, like we normally do when we try to go get advanced games, we go in as a group because we want to make sure that right. we're playing 5-0 level games and, and you know, not to yeah, offend the 3-5s, yeah, but like it's not going to be a fun experience for either of us. A couple of hours a week. Yeah, if the 5-0s like are four. playing with the 3-5s, it's not going to be fun for anyone. So like mm-hmm. we used to go in and again, like if there are good players, we'll try and mix in and we'll do all those things. There are challenge courts. So again, the four or four or five players will still come play with us. But now if we do go out there and you have advanced players that are out there and there are people waiting on the rack, you have to mix in with them. Mm -hmm. And that is mandated. So even if there are free courts and you you are just playing as as a group of four and there are two people waiting and once you're done with your game, even though there are free courts now, you have to mix in with those two. You have to mix those two people into your game, regardless of what level they're at, no matter what they're playing at. And it has go. caused a lot of concern that now the courts are going to be overridden with just three O's and three yeah, fives. Yeah, high players aren't going to yeah, go. So we're, again, no I'll, give you, I'll, give, I'll give you a secret. This is how I become better, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. As I mentioned earlier. So when I start, I, I used to watch David, like Andrew, like all those pro, like Joe Fabius, everybody like playing. But I say, okay, I want to be there. Mm-hmm. I want to play with those guys. Mm-hmm. But they won't allow me to play because yeah. I, I didn't have the level. So right. what I did... I say, okay, I'm going to play there. And I start training. Yep. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's Good. the beauty like, of the challenge course. And, the because now I say, okay, course. I want to be there. And yeah. when I made it, I was like the happiest guy. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing when I first so played in Imagine like, if my, we didn't like, have that. So I would have like stay playing like same same spot like forever. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I started there, there was two advanced nights. And I had to play like six months before I got invited oh, yeah. to those nights. Yeah. Yep. Right now, it's all gone. Mm-hmm. Because wow. the city doesn't want to field feel all the calls. I'm like, damn, we're paying you. Mm-hmm. Do your damn job and answer the calls mm-hmm. and make some make some uh, 
you know, because because we're getting indoctrinated to, you know, we got to thank the city. We got to thank the city for doing this. For, why? It's our tax dollars. But they don't yeah. want to get the calls from the people that are just crying about it. Is that yeah. what's going on? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So they had yeah. a, apparently so they, they had a few complaints now play. everything is open that play. the advanced the advanced players are taking so, over the courts. But again, this was when Mondays and Wednesdays from a three hour window. It was just a three hour window on Mondays and Wednesdays where the advanced player. And, it was it was a designated advanced night. And they two had, days they, a week. Yeah. Three hours each yeah. of those days. They have something. They have something in place. Let's say they got two court, right? Mm -hmm. They only have like twelve people. For this two court, they're gonna give away one court. They're gonna stay with one, one court. Yeah. So you see, this is how it's work. But for yeah. some reason now they say you cannot even do that. So you no. have to mix like with. Yeah, everybody. you gotta. Yeah. So I mean, I used to take my family to go to do picnics in that park. Mm. But I'm not gonna do that anymore because there's a, always a creepy guy in the woods watching us. Do I have to invite <laughs> him to the picnic? You have to invite him. It's the way it works. The rules Inclusivity. Change. Yeah. Yeah. And I will, I will say, cold. like, honestly, it was it was David and the pirates that made the place famous. Is is what mm -hmm. I would say. Oh like, no, he, he was, people traveled to come play there. It was it it was a really great it was place a fun to come place. play. Like he it was, was like he was the best. Yeah. yeah. Like you could name that place and everybody in Florida like knew about yeah. it because like the Pirates made it famous. David played there all the time and it was just a, a place like even when I first started when I moved to Orlando and I asked people like hey I'm I'm I played about 4045 right now but I want to get better games like I want to try mm -hmm. and meet some advanced players. It was the first place people told me it was mm -hmm. like Monday Wednesdays go there you'll find some great mm -hmm. players. Like it was almost a guaranteed way for like those better players to go out and like yeah. find other better players without having to seek to other methods or pay yeah, to play I mean, at an indoor uh, place or you know, something like that. A lot of people a lot of people say, well, <coughs> you know, if you're an advanced player, you want your own group, go go pay, you know, go to clear one and pay to play. I say, well, why doesn't the city if the city charges me to to play there and I can play my own group, I'll pay it. Yeah. Why and use the money to build more courts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got they got the space. They got the land. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and why is it that the advanced players have to pay to play, but the beginner to intermediate players don't? Like, what's what's the difference? Yeah. That's that now you're like the advanced players are the ones that should go because out they're and not seek the out ones other courts. The city. That's the problem. <laughs> and is that is that the way we want to run our facilities oh, now? It's just whoever Edit makes the most noise. Edit that out. <laughs> whoever makes the most noise gets their way. That's that's the way we're doing it now. That's yeah. how it's always been done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh. Yeah. That's uh that's an interesting thing. So hopefully um the city does end up finding a resolution. Um I hope it doesn't stay the it way did. it is right it now. Did. Well, it, it did. No, it it's going to leave it this way. Um yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Unless you yeah. unless oh. you run for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've told a few people that. <laughs> mm. And there are other videos <laughs> if you haven't watched them already. There are other videos talking about this very thing that mm. have popped up over the last couple of days. So um, definitely something to keep an eye on. Mike, David, thank you so much for being yeah, here. Man, Always uh, appreciate having you. Cliff, uh, any final notes before I send us off? Thank you, Varus. Right. That that was part oh. of my send-off. That's my send-off coming soon. <laughs> thank you, Varus. So, yeah. anything, anything you got before I, I give my spiel? No, Mike, thank you for coming, man. Always a pleasure Always. having you. David. Thanks for having me, buddy. I don't know. I don't know about you. So. <laughs> well, we've had him on two times already, yeah. so I don't know if we can say get, much I, I, at this I'm point. getting a little bit tired. Of <laughs> yeah. But he brings the beer, so. Yeah. So, well, uh, I brought the beer. I don't know. Uh, you're right. I brought uh, the beer. You are, time. You're out there. Both That's, times I brought the beer. He beers. brings the beer. That's why we run out. <laughs> we ran out real quick, buddy. <laughs> Uh, all right, this episode of the Pickleball Courthouse brought to you by Voris from Cliff Pickleball. Make sure to check out that paddle coming soon. Uh, hopefully it's already out by the time this podcast is out. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for that amazing paddle. Um, I think everybody should have one in their bag. So uh, go ahead and check out the Voris from Cliff Pickleball. As always, if you are enjoying our content, make sure to subscribe to Cliff Pickleball on YouTube and Instagram, as well as BK Pickleball on Instagram and YouTube. Um, and comment below what you'd like to see us cover next. So if there are any topics that you want to see us cover that um, you'd like to see us talk about or just elaborate more on or even just coaching videos and things that you'd like to see, uh, leave that in the comments below so we can go out and uh, create more content for you guys. As well, always. Uh, one last thing. And tell us if you want us to bring you david again because yeah. i'm thinking about like <laughs> if if you want to see yeah Mike, that's that's it, that's it for me if you want to see david nell be back on the podcast for another episode definitely put that down in the comments as well um yeah. david is an all-star but yeah, you know there, we might we might have to cut it well <laughs> so, you, know, you, you won't hurt my feelings 
Uh, as always, I will see you next time. But for now, the court is adjourned. Boom. Hmm.